Hello, Bishop William Johnson from the Diocese of Des Moines, coming to you from St. Ambrose Cathedral here in Des Moines. We're mindful of the feast at the center of the month of September. Monday, September 14th is the Feast of the Triumph of the Cross, that cross which is the source of our salvation, our hope and strength, and of our solidarity when we are suffering. Rob Jair reminds us of a time when a young man confided to a religious elder about his anxiety and the hard times in which he was living. This is natural, said the elder, but such things are beyond our control. All we need have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. In fact, that anxious younger person was no human, but a hobbit, Frodo Baggins. The religious elder was the wizard Gandalf, to whom Frodo disclosed his fear as he was making his way on the, to the evil realm of Mordor. That way in which Frodo and Gandalf may be imaginative children of the creative genius J.R.R. Tolkien in his Lord of the Rings saga. But that situation and the wisdom conveyed are no mere fiction. All of us know that we're living in momentous, often disturbing times when there's so much that is beyond our control. We are people then who find ourselves having to be creative in the way in which we give witness to that community of love who is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're to remain in relationship even when there's times of disagreement or division. Evil forces and those unfriendly spirits that are lurking in our midst seek to set us against each other, to become angry, jealous, suspicious, or even hateful. This is not simply a tendency among people of different nationalities, or races, or religions. It can also occur among people with whom we share so much, people who are close to us, who live in the same house with us, who go to the same school or work in the same place, even worship at the same church. And when this happens, it's sad and tragic. It may reveal, among other things, as we can refer again to Tolkien, that we've chosen to use our time and energy trying to pursue that precious ring rather than other persons and seeing them as the source of our fulfillment, riches, and happiness. There's so much at stake. We can't coast on momentum, but we need the, the example of Jesus pulling us along that magnetic power of the cross and all it represents and how Jesus' mission is embedded in the cross. How he confronts the evil one who thought he had the last laugh, that evil one who hates God and hates anyone who relates to God, who wants us to stumble and fall away from the friendship that Jesus desires with us in the community of the church. And so that spirit that is released from the power of the cross, from Jesus' side, is the spirit then that draws us and is meant to keep us together, to evermore be agents of reconciliation and peace, to be not afraid to disagree at times, but don't allow that then to write off other persons, but to see them as ones who are calling us to a deeper love, to lay ourselves down. So we will engage Jesus, sometimes with words, sometimes as he does, with great sighs, sometimes with tears and groans. But we're making room for the Spirit then, so that whatever disagreements or hard feelings or whatever decisions we've made, our hearts don't become hardened, but become ever more supple with that Spirit of Jesus. Of course, it is on the cross, and the triumph of the cross, where Jesus reveals love is the last word, and when he rises again, and then places all time under his feet, but gives us our time, our sacred share in his mission, in what we're about today. Time is a precious gift. We must use the understanding and advocacy of the Spirit. I think that Spirit helps us recognize the lie that social media sometimes communicates, that everybody has a better life than us, and that we should feel resentful and even identify ourselves as victims, such that everyone owes us something. Talk about a recipe for loneliness. God is never alone in himself. The Son and the Father love each other with mutual and spiritual love. And so we need to celebrate that bond of faith. And when we're feeling that we're close to our own personal cross, to not only look to Jesus, but to look around as Mary and John could see each other out of the, the, their vision of sight. If we have two or three close friends that we can trust and share everything of our life story with, then we are truly blessed. These are people who are a gift to us. People for whom we would never want to be a cause of suffering by mocking them, 
by gossiping about them, breaking trust or sharing secrets, or exploiting their situation, let alone using their beauty or bodies for our own pleasure. But rather, through that cross, be courageous enough to stand up for others, to share the good that is there, even to be willing to suffer for them and with them, using that spirit gift of courage that God gives to us. As another Slovak who suffered at a time under the yoke of communist oppression, Jan Samolczyk said, when you see someone acting courageously, you will act courageously as well. All of this nurtured and fueled by that awareness that by Christ's cross, as we look up to it just as Moses was lifted up in the desert, so the Son of Man lifted up for us so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life as the evangelist John reminds us and gives us those great words of such peace and encouragement. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your cross you have redeemed the world. Let us continue to be agents of good in the time that God has given us this precious gift mingled with our faith, mingled with our hope that in the cross lies our salvation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.